Hello and good morning traders. Real-time daily trader days. We have five days a week, five different traders. We will speak about trading days, strategies, market screening, and maybe one or two questions from your side directly answered in our webinar. Our goal is quick, smart, but for this daily. So let's have a nice start and we will start like every day also on Friday, today, 9th of March 2018 with a risk disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposits. If you are a starter, Please start with a demo account to make yourself familiar with long trading, short trading, leverage trading, and your personal risk management. If you'd like to read the full risk disclaimer, just visit one of our web pages, for example, adminmarkets.com, and everything will be to find there. This is me. I'm talking from the Berlin office of Admin Markets. We are a big international broker. We have over 18 country offices, so I'm from the Berlin office. My English is made in Germany, but hopefully some of my quality too, but I'm not the main speaker. The main speaker is the day trader of today. This is our scheme on Monday. It's Jay's day. On Tuesday, it's Paul's day. On Wednesday, it's Giancarlo's day. On Thursday, it's Zinnert's day. And like today, on Friday, it's Dirk's day. Our leading day traders live. Today's actions are tomorrow's results. And of course, if you like to trade Forex and CFDs, you will get many benefits only with Admin Markets. Some of the benefits are displayed now on your screen. For example, best spreads for our bestseller DAX 30 CFD, typically spread to 0.8.8 points without any commission, without any stop distances. You can trade it with MT4 or MT5. It's your choice. Uh, even the leverage, you can change or choose 500 or 10. It's your choice. All details about that on AdminMarkets.com, of course. All other details you can find on AdminMarkets.com too, like our regulatory background or how to contact us. You can call us, you can send us email or visit the other channels like YouTube or Facebook. Everything is linked from AdminMarkets.com. Enough on my side. Now it's time for the day trader of today. This is Dirk. Hi. Good morning, Dirk. Your view to the markets. Good morning, Jens. Good morning, crowd. Um, hopefully, everybody can hear me, and um, hopefully, um, the uh, two days DAX and two days NFP <clears throat> data will give us a, a couple of chances, maybe, um, to have a good long setup. So, <clears throat> this morning, um, on the upper side, we started already um, a short setup. This one um, got collected already with 35 points. Um, Starting uh, at 12,335 uh, uh, and downwards to uh, the 12,300 barrier, and that's where I just closed the trade. So <clears throat> let's let's have a good start right this morning. Like Jens already said, um, we will be um, having a look at the 61.8 level, um, two days so-called Fibonacci levels, of course. Um, first of all, a horizontal line, and uh, to just have a look <clears throat> where that one might be um, interesting at. <clears throat> to the downside, there would be some some movement, some interesting movements uh, down to this 38.2 and the 50% level. This is the 50% Fibonacci. You find that one around the 12 155s. So if you just place, for example, a long setup right here, and just take the order letter, place the uh, the buy limit, for example, with two lots. Um, for example, um, let's have um, let's have a start at uh, 12 e uh, 12 1 73 and um, that's the way where you just drag that one up to the upside where do you might place a take profit around um, the 23.6 again that is a lot you might be doing that just right before this level maybe just a little bit to the downside to the 12 50s and of course, don't forget, don't forget to place a stop loss. You do that one with a downside, and maybe use the 61.8 level, and maybe, <laughs> maybe using it a little bit, um, just um, a little bit above or a little bit um, underneath that one, um, so that you um, always have a look at your risk. You see, the risk is euro 256 right now. Um, you just really move it a little bit more up up the road. Just don't don't risk too much, and just uh, always think about your risk management. Uh, of of course, you, you you may something like between 100 and 150 euros risk. For example, uh, let's place this one at a, a little bit underneath the 12 100 level. So that one is um, now set. Buy limit, uh, two lots, and um, as you can see, that one uh, you will you will be able to. Control that, of course, with the mouse and, of course, with the old uh, school um, version um, going into the terminal and just check the levels. And, of course, um, uh, um, as you like it, you can um, 
you can always you can always uh, try to manage to to uh, to change that one. Um, but um, first of all, let's have the setup and let's have the setup. Let's 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 come to the setup and and, and stick to the setup and don't change it the next minutes or the next thirty to fifty minutes. Um, of course, watch out this 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 afternoon at fourteen thirty CET. There are the so-called NFP data and non-farm payrolls. So the U.S. The U.S. Uh, market will be um, in you know, so-called U.S. Labor Department is informing about the February data, um, how many how many um, new um, payrolls are added, and um, and that's a, a very important uh, trade data. Mostly, mostly it's going to be volatile. Okay. <clears throat> Looking at the DAX, of course we have a, lo a couple of um, possibilities with the Fibonacci tools. Um, from the um, perspective right now, we took the, the, the last uh, low here. That's the low from uh, the 6th of February and um, the last high uh, from the 26th of February, just to inform you about the Fibonacci setup. Where are these lines coming from? That's the way to do it. If we have a look at the chart technical analysis, for example, for the Xedra DAX, um, you will be heading to the next resistances at 12,420, 12,524, 12,601, and 12,688. I will try to maybe, let's say, um, draw this couple of horizontal lines where um, the next the next resistance, the next Xedra DAX resistance is coming up. And this one, as I already said just a few seconds ago, is 12 for 20s. So let's let's do it that way. Um, that's a couple of points just above uh, the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement. All right. So this might be something like a move to the upside where a, a target for long for, for bulls is right now. And uh, if you stick to the if you stick to the, the setup already drawn in and already programmed in as a pending order, <clears throat> you will be seeing the next the next um, supports and the next supports as well for the set, set of drugs it will be discovered at around the 12216 and 12125. So let's draw that one in with a horizontal line as well. Let's see this 12125 level is a little bit, just a little bit underneath this 50% <clears throat> retracement. Okay, so and these two levels are the ones um, who are, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be observed today. And um, if you have a look at uh, the timetable, as I said, non farm payrolls 1430 CET, you might check this whole setup between 13, 1330. <clears throat> and um, of course, try to check. Try to check the volume. How much? How much uh, <clears throat> is already already in? All right. Yesterday, Thursday, approximately around the market close, the U.S. market close, um, Mr. Trump announced the tariffs. So um, there's going to going, there's going to be a tariff on steel, steel imports, <clears throat> around 25 percent, and there's going to be a tariff on aluminium, um, uh, around 10 percent. Um, what 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 is going on with the DAX? Um, what has to, has it to do with the DAX? Well, um, it's not only um, steel tariffs. Um, if you think about a so-called yeah, let's say let's say it uh, a so-called trade war or something like that, um, it's something like you open the box of Pandora. If you start if you start with tariffs, others will try to answer and maybe put on some tariffs as well. And um, hopefully hopefully there will be uh, there won't be any escalation in that. But if if that happens, if that happens, a lot of German companies, like the DAX companies, uh, and especially like the the car manufacturers, so the, uh, a lot of big companies, are <coughs> possibly affected. So if that happens, um, the DAX is more possibly not going to the upside. You can imagine. So more to the downside. Let's see what's going on with a couple of projections. And if you see, if you see, for example, projections around 11, 11, 350s, 11, 130s, if you see projections like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 
you see projections like uh, those 11300 and 11500 for example as well uh, if you look at the eurex data um, because don't forget next week friday uh, at a 13 cd there will be the so called um, quadruple witching uh, and this quadruple witching is very important for the DAX because a lot of futures options are running out. They are going to be expiring. So um, there are a couple of levels, a, a couple of interested, le interesting levels like uh, the 11, 11500s, 11800s down to the 11300s. So that might be interesting to see what is going to happen if we really move to the downside between this 11800 11300 so just maybe yeah you know, let's let's have this kind of a shape and a trading box if we look that to the downside uh, it might be interesting too if if you are already think about having a short and uh, a longer longer term setup um, to the short to the downside uh, you might be looking at a so called trading box as a target and if you're looking to maybe um, let's uh, let's say it um, to, for a cheap buy for a German DAX, you might be waiting and um, on the maybe yeah let's say um, having having a little bit more patience and buy that at around the zone of 11, 11,500, 11,600 for example, just as a trading idea for a swing. On top of that, besides the intraday trading, of course. Okay, let's let's have a look at uh, for example the. A Euro Canadian. <clears throat> I talked about a, a Euro Canadian uh, trade uh, setup, a short setup um, um, last week, and um, I talked about um, a setup which is already stopped out. So the second setup, uh, which I talked about as well, would uh, would have been the so-called blue box here, so-called short zone. This one worked out very, very well. Um, 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 more than 100, 150 pips, or even more to go to the downside right now. Already posted that one and guidance. That's a German um, website um, where I just entered the the zone at 161.00 uh, a short and um, took that one out at 159.50s uh, with a second for the second half. Uh, another half was already taken out. So where does it come from? The trigger. The trigger was the so-called high from here from this. Um, 17 January 2016 where the euro cat made a high at 161.037 so that one is the important trigger zone and that was uh, the high the high from this weekly this weekly candle as you can see um, why it is it not working right now okay 161.29 and um, that's the one so a little bit a little bit to the upside but um, uh, after that um, it started tanking um, besides the technical stuff, why the Euro, Euro cut, especially the Canadian dollar, what is going on right now? Because why, why is it why is it going to be stronger um, the last uh, days? And that has to do a little a little bit uh, with the tariffs, Trump's tariffs, for example. Um, those tariffs, um, um, like especially Mexico and uh, Canada, are, are taken taken out. So um, the so-called NAFTA countries. Uh, we will be seeing the next days and weeks to come what is going on with NAFTA because they are trying to re renegotiate that one. And um, we will be seeing maybe a little bit more weakness to come for the Canadian dollar. So this uh, this kind of a movement right now might be only a technical move to the, to the 161 levels right here and 138 levels right here. And we'll um, try to... Um, mark that one with a trading box <coughs> as well just where the Canadian, the Euro Canadian might be heading to just as a target zone. <clears throat> and um, from this one, from this perspective, the 161.8 and 138.2 level, it might be a so-called rebound trade where you could place a, a Euro cat long um, for um, a so-called retest of the 161 level and a way to go to the upside. And imagine if those if those NAFTA trades, uh, NAFTA um, renegotiations fail. Uh, so Canada and on top of that Mexico, Mexico will be suffering um, because uh, the United, United States uh, is the most important trading partner of these two countries. And especially for, for Canada, it would be very, very bad and difficult to you know, find some other <clears throat> trading partners like the US. Okay. Going to the euro US dollar. Um, we spoke about we spoke about a few um, let's say um, reaction zones uh, the last webinars as well. And um, if you go uh, to the downside, for example, you see those blue trading boxes. 
just explain where they're coming from. Um, first of all, the one 120, uh, 150 scenario is still in play. So this, this is a short setup. Um, this is still a um, short play. Uh, the short, um, for example, um, like I did that, um, I have to uh, inform you about that because I'm still Euro dollar short, um, is um, from the 120, 24, um, 20s level, that's uh, 161, 8 Fibonacci um, as well. And on top of that, um, um, one of the old descending trend lines and in combination with a, a short um, overshoot last uh, day, the last day on Thursday on ECB day, uh, just around uh, the start of uh, the uh, announcement um, uh, 1345 CT, the announcement of the unchanged rates, but uh, a little bit of a, a really, really little bit of a change was that they, they deleted a wording, uh, so they won't um, widen. They won't widen the so-called um, QE uh, amount of 30, 30 billion a month. So that's the only change they made. Um, but they didn't. They didn't speak about something like um, that. They won't uh, maybe widen uh, it from a time perspective. So it's still possible from from this kind of wording. It's still possible that they will um, widening it uh, the way uh, after September, for example. So that's that's still possible. That they could do that. Uh, right now, this speaks for a longer term weakness of the euro. For the first, from the first thought, we still don't know. We still don't know how the market will react with all this kind of a trade war stuff or a terrorist um, the US administration is going to impose in the next days and weeks to come. You never know what is going to happen. But from the technical perspective, it still looks like a short. It still looks like this, re this test of the 138.2 level is going to be um, dumped to the downside and um, a retest of this 121.50 uh, level is on the cards. So this would be a, fav a, a scenario to favor. Um, another one uh, for the, uh, another step to the downside is the next blue trading box you can see here. Let's go to the daily chart. Where does it come from? It is from the 2017 high from September. As I said, uh, a couple of webinars before, it's still wallet. Um, <clears throat> this one is the high at 120.92. So this would be the next target to look at to the downside. We spoke a lot about the downside, what is going on with the other direction. Um, as you can see, you see another blue play trading box to the upside. This one is um, the 125.98 level. I just um, <clears throat> need to explain where this level comes from. Um, if you look uh, at a really long-term chart, just where it comes from, um, you will see um, <clears throat> it from one of the one of the very very long term um, highs is, it was the one uh, one thirty nine ninety three level, and <coughs> if you combine if you combine that one thirty nine ninety three level with the um, low of one o three forty, you will directly find this sixty one eight level at one twenty five ninety eight. So this is where it comes from. It is an important level, and it is still a really big, um, yeah, really big and important um, resistance uh, in the long-term scenario. So if this is going to be rock up, the, 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 there might be some some um, adding some adding movement to the upside as well. Um, possibly, possibly 127, 129. Um, you never know. But right now, from right now, as I said before, it looks like a, a little bit of a correction move and a, a technical move to the retest of 121.50s. So that's the thing. Um, that is the scenario where I would take out the position as well, the 121.50s uh, uh, level. Okay, so then another one, um, where was uh, WTI, that's oil. WTI, this morning I already had this one with a Fibonacci um, um, analysis as well. That's because it's already here, already visible. And uh, those two uh, blue uh, trading boxes as well as from, as you can see from this uh, kind of perspective right now, is a, a try of a rebound. That's what I spoke about just, a, a, yeah, 30 minutes ago, um, a rebound scenario. So this rebound scenario is around the 60s um, and is maybe maybe just as a target zone going up to this 50% um, 50 retracement where you um, are around the 62, 62.50s into the 60, uh, 63 levels. 
one thing for sure, um, besides the technicals, let's uh, let's have a look uh, at a few numbers, just a few numbers to maybe um, shake you and wake you up because of uh, looking to the downside. At, I'm looking to the downside at WTI in the longer run. Um, the US production, the crude oil production, and even, even the imports, they, they went up, of course. Um, it's nice if you have a higher demand. Um, it's always nice for something like um, agricultural commodities or other commodities. And like every commodity, everything is perfect when demand is way, way above um, the supply. But if you think about the supply, the current supply of the US, um, the US production is roughly um, going up uh, uh, to a, lo a level of 10.5 million barrels per day. We are all almost there. And it's not far away, <clears throat> it's not far away from the Russian production level. So uh, the US uh, and Russia uh, are almost at the same level of oil production these days. And uh, if you look about <clears throat> all the kind of, um, yeah, let's say a hard work of the oil producing exporting countries, so the OPEC countries uh, try to to um, to gear, they try to, um, to, to control the output, um, <clears throat> this is something contradicting and um, something absolutely counterproductive. So um, <clears throat> it might be might be heading to the downside with a little bit relief, um, as I said, to the 62, 62, 5 levels, but it might be going to the downside. The downside levels are drawn in. Uh, you got the 138.2 level and the 161.8 level. So those two projections, Fibonacci projections to the downside, um, maybe tell you where where the market is going to be uh, to the short side. So just as a so-called target zone. And um, just for, <clears throat> let's say, do that with the shapes again, um, just for a target zone to the downside <clears throat> might be something between the 138.2 level and the 161.8. So, um, a few, a few um, uh, questions, of course. A few, maybe, maybe there is some, some, some special wish, Jens. Um, um, some, some questions. Yeah, let's take a look to gold and silver if you have a little bit of time. We have maybe one or two or three minutes for a quick, quick look. I just say already thank you for today. Have a nice week and nice weekend. And tomorrow is not another day, but on Monday because today it's Friday. So on Monday, like every work day, it's Jay's day. Hope to see some of you or all of you again. And if you like, a couple of hours later on our YouTube channel, you can see the recorded video. Thanks and greetings from my side. I'm Jens from Berlin office and the last one, two, three minutes from Dirk with gold and silver. <clears throat> okay, first of all, for gold, just from a really quick um, <clears throat> technical perspective, this kind of a gold move um, in the next days to come, uh, to come um, um, you always have to think about, um, you got one date in March, uh, which is very important, um, besides, um, besides CFTC data every week, of course. Um, this is the 21st of March because um, that's the day of the Fed meeting and the, the Fed rate decision. So um, um, gold is not always 100% reacting uh, to um, to interest rates, but um, from this perspective, if you see uh, the, the so-called Fed forecast or, or the so-called Fed dots uh, into the future, you might be thinking about is it really um, on favor to be uh, on on the long side. Uh, if you talk about tariffs, if you talk about um, all these fundamentals and about maybe, um, let's say, um, terror, let's say, um, stuff like um, North Korea or whatever, geopolitical tensions, let's say it in this word, um, let's describe it with this kind of a situation, um, it still looks that it, it's going to be <clears throat> a little bit better so um, that we might see a retest of old levels from the 50% uh, Fibonacci. So this one is to the downside. Um, this one is around 50%, it's around the 1,300 level. And as I said a couple of uh, times, um, it's still important to have a look at the 61.8 level. So this one is 12.85. If you look at the current levels, there might be a little drop. Um, important thing, gold and silver 
as, for example, the most important currencies like Euro, US dollar or US dollar versus the yen, uh, um, really, really heavily re reacting at the non-farm payrolls. So watch out at, the, at this 14.30 CET time today. And if you, for example, uh, for, for those guys um, trading intraday in the minutes or in the five minute charts. Um, if you have a look um, at, for example, the gold trade, you might be interested in, let's say, seeing where, where, where's a 15 minute chart. And let's just, let's just um, squeeze that a little bit more. Um, all right. So <clears throat> if you see a, a really um, fast drop spike to the downside, as the first move, as the first move, for example, during the NFP data at 1430 CT, um, you might try your first uh, rebound trade as a long scenario. So if if you see a spike, a, a drop um, to the one um, to the uh, to the 50 percent level right here, or uh, very close to that level, you might be interested, or you might be uh, in favor to to have a first trade setup with a long setup. Don't overdo. Think about risk and money management. Think about the position size. Always do that. Um, so f first trade should should be a little bit smaller, just to try it out if to, if you feel comfortable with it. And if this trade really moves into the positive territory and moves back up, so you will be happy with the small win as well as um, with, a, for example, a, a, a really fat uh, a fat position uh, in, in in the loss. So on the opposite side, uh, it's always nice to have little wins uh, and little winners um, all the time, and um, catching them and things are catching them and so-called the so-called catching catching noise. Um, okay, market watch to that silver, of course. Silver is a special thing. Um, if you look at um, first of all ETF data, um, this year's this year's um, silver <clears throat> silver collecting of um, people uh, are buying silver via, um, for example, precious precious prior over the counter, for example, um, are going to, uh, are still in a minus from from the beginning of the year until today's today's March uh, the ninth, um, and on top of that. Uh, ETF data shows that um, a lot of ETFs ETFs um, bought uh, bought silver uh, the last days, but it's still it's still in a negative territory um, in the perspective from uh, the year beginning year to date. Okay, technical sides of course daily chart. Um, here we do the same, absolutely the same. Um, we will try to catch this um, low and build up this um, last high, and we'll see um, what's going to go uh, with the projections to the downside. Those ones uh, are really, really t uh, way too low. I can't imagine that silver is really falling um, off the cliff uh, and, and, and really falling out of the window like 1480s, uh, and even. Um, uh, if you look more to the downside at a 161.8 level to 1430s, um, of course we we got this this so-called day of the silver flash crash here, uh, and where we got the spike down to this um, scenario to this uh, levels, but um, um, it's still in favor. It's still this 61.8 level here um, as a so-called support, and um, if you look at the the last days, you see uh, a lot of um, yeah, let's say tests of the 61 level. Yeah, it's uh, um, it, it, it's been tested a lot of times. Um, of course, you can talk about higher higher lows um, and and stuff like that. But uh, if you just look at the 61.8 level, just try to take this one and to see and interpret this one as a bounce possibility to the upside, where you could see the first the first um, uh, targets on the long side at the 50% level. And the next one um, at the 1690. Um, if you look um, uh, the last last weeks um, and last month, um, silver really, um, besides this flash crash, uh, silver uh, was always performing between between 1563 and 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 the 70 70 50s. So um, there is nothing like 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 uh, silver price will be skyrocketing. It's skyrocketing from 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 whatever the fact will be. Uh, but um, if, if you just see it uh, at iterate day or a next day's perspective swing, uh, it might be interesting to be on the long side just around the 61.8 level. Again, watch out for the 1430, 40, 1430 CT NFP uh, data. This will be affecting silver as well. Okay. Yeah, Jens, um, from my perspective, um, the weekend is 
almost <laughs> almost there almost is very close um uh, let's say it with the word tgif <laughs> i Thank already God said friday. Thanks, goodbye at it. one two three <laughs> minutes and you make one two three minutes, oh, okay. minutes. so you are like okay. Thomas Gottschalk in the best times everybody who knows Jesus Christ. <laughs> always überziehen no idea what is it in english so thanks for now thanks goodbye quick and smart 15 to 20 minutes we will try it next time just with uh, smiling. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>